It is a delight and pleasure to be here with Professor David Kurtzer, who is an authority on Italian politics, society, and history, and the Vatican-Italian relationship. He is co-founder and served for many years as co-editor of the Journal of Modern Italian Studies. He currently serves as the Paul DuPay University Professor of Social Science at Brown University. He's written several books, including The Pope Who Would Be King and The Pope and Mussolini, The Secret History of Pius XI, and The Rise of Fascism in Europe. He is a recipient of the prestigious Pulitzer Prize, and he is also the author of The Kidnapping of Edgardo Mortara, who, uh, which Steven Spielberg plans to direct as a film. So thank you very much, Professor Kurtzer, for taking time. My pleasure. So to jump right in here, um, what is modern anti-Semitism, and how was the Catholic Church involved in its perpetuation? Well, we normally date modern anti-Semitism to the 1880s, 1890s, so take shape initially in, in Europe, and uh, it involved the demonization of the Jews, who had been relatively recently liberated in much of Europe. Before that, they were ghettoized, they were treated as second-class citizens. Now, in, in much of Europe, they were given equal rights. This creates a backlash for various uh, reasons. And uh, so this demonization of the Jews where they're seen as the evil enemy who are never loyal to the country in which they live, who uh, control the banks, but also are responsible for socialism and eventually communism. Uh, these are, uh, and various programs and at the same time, as modern anti-Semitism was taking place, it's interesting that some of the old forms, uh, the medieval forms of anti-Judaism, were given a new boost. So, for example, the ritual murder charge, nothing could be more kind of medieval than that, uh, was uh, there were many cases of ritual murder charges and murders of Jews on ritual murder charges in, in Europe in the late 19th century. And this, you know, so this then uh, continues uh, to percolate and uh, into, of course, uh, the Holocaust eventually. And uh, one of the big questions is, in fact, what is the relationship of this modern anti-Semitism to the older forms of, of anti-Semitism? That's where uh, some of the polemics with the uh, Christian churches, and particularly with the Catholic Church, have come about. Yeah, uh, fascinating. So what's the official position of the papacy towards the Jewish community today? And has that changed uh, very much under Pope Francis? Well, the big change was you know, earlier with the Second Vatican Council. This was a huge change. This, now we're talking about the early 1960s, initially with uh, John the 23rd and then uh, Paul the Sixth, uh, and the uh, Nostra Aetate, which was 1965. This is when the position of the church toward the Jews changed radically. Uh, before then, the Jews had been seen by the church as you know, responsible for uh, the crucifixion of Jesus, as stubborn people who refused to accept the uh, divinity of Jesus and so on, and therefore were cursed by God to roam the earth as um, you know, oppressed peoples forever until and unless they ever saw the light. Uh, this remained the position of the church through the 1950s. It was also the case that the church through, through all those years opposed interreligious dialogue, not just with the Jews, but with Protestants, with, with other groups as well. Um, so this is what changed uh, so dramatically in the 1960s. Since then, we then you know, had the first visit of a pope with John Paul II uh, 30 or so years ago to uh, the synagogue in Rome and, and various uh, efforts of reaching out. Uh, I'd say the other big issue, the one, uh, maybe the major issue in uh, or one of the major issues providing difficulty and, and tension in the relationships between the popes, the Vatican, and the Jews is the difficulty the Vatican has had coming to terms with its uh, previous demonization of the Jews, including uh, having some responsibility along with other Christian churches in making the Holocaust possible. And uh, that remains a, a sticking point. Pope Francis, I think, uh, is someone who himself is embattled by the right wing in the church. And, and one of the, to understand the church and its attitudes toward Jews today, you have to understand this division. There's a, a conservative segment in the church who uh, very much opposes Pope Francis. And a part of the conservative creed is that the church went wrong with the Second Vatican Council, that it went away from the old eternal verities 
And certainly one of those verities had to do with the Jews and how the Jews were uh, demonized. So the en enemies that Francis has, uh, you know, one of their issues is in fact uh, how uh, the Jews are treated and, and not just Jews, but other, other religions as well. So this opening to interreligious dialogue uh, that began with the Second Vatican Council remains a somewhat uh, controversial issue in, in the church. Uh, but I think Francis has been quite good as far as you know, the Jewish issues go. Mm -hmm. So you started to touch upon this in terms of the, the hierarchy and the, and the senior leadership, but how much would you say the views of the Pope represent the views of Catholics throughout the world uh, beyond senior leadership as well? Well, I mean, in terms of the problem of anti-Semitism, um, we know that there's, you know, by surveys and so on, that there's a certain significant proportion of people out there who have negative views of, of Jews and say anti-Semitic views. And that would be true of, of Catholics as well as Protestants and not to even get into the Islamic question, which of course is somewhat different one. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I don't know that the Pope, you know, how much influence does he have with, with that kind of sentiment out in countries around the world where there are Catholic populations. Uh, I suspect you know, not 100% effectiveness, um, but certainly there's uh, pretty clear guidance from the Pope about uh, castigating anti-Semitism. Uh, but again, it's uh, only going to be partially effective. Right. So today we talk a lot about um, the intersection of religion and politics. You know, it's well known in America that Orthodox Jews tend to vote Republican and non-Orthodox Jews tend to vote Democrat. We talk a lot about the evangelicals and their alignment with Orthodoxy. Uh, how does Catholicism globally uh, influence politics? I mean, maybe even starting home in America, but is there generally a correlation between one's political views in any part of the world and their, and their Catholic, uh, and their Catholic uh, commitments? Well, you know, each country I think is different. Certainly in the U.S., um, you know, Catholics in the U.S. tended to vote Democratic until relatively recent years because they were associated with various immigrant groups, uh, Irish, Italian, and so on. Um, and that change, and part of the change has, seems to have to do with abortion issues and some related you know, social issues, uh, homosexuality and so on. Um, so it would seem that the, in the U.S. the Catholic uh, population is divided. I think in the most recent presidential election, white Catholics voted majority for Trump at the same time that apparently something like 71% of the Jews voted for Hillary Clinton. Um, in Italy, it's actually a big issue right now. Italy is in the middle of political turmoil. And uh, the, the right wing, which is actually ascendant in many ways in Italy, uh, on the one hand, sees itself as very Catholic, but is, uh, sees the Pope as an enemy, just because of the big issue in Italy, you know, the biggest, uh, hottest issue is immigration. Uh, the Pope has called on Italians to be open to immigrants, um, and these uh, conservative or right-wing parties are make, you know, their bread and butter is getting people upset about immigration and the threat of immigration. So the um, kind of charismatic leader of the right in Italy right now is named Salvini. He literally goes around with a rosary in his hand and kissing the rosary, uh, you know, during public rallies, as if you know Trump were doing this in one of his big uh, thirty thousand people rallies. Uh, so, or in Poland, the uh, the right wing is very much involved and, and linked to the church, which historically is exceedingly anti-Semitic. So. Again, in each, uh, each of these countries, it's a somewhat different uh, pattern. Okay, okay. so my, my, my last question for you then is, um, you know, we talked about the great teshuva, the great repentance of the Catholic Church, if you will, in the 60s, um, uh, and some reversals. What does the Jewish community want now? Is the sense basically among interfaith, um, you know, advocates and among Jewish agencies that we want to maintain status quo because Catholic Jewish relationships, uh, uh, relations are great? Or is there something that being pushed for, something being yearned for to be achieved in the coming decade? Well, there is some uh, important, very late-breaking news there, I think, in that um, Pope Francis just announced a few months ago this year that he was finally authorizing the opening of the papal archives for World War II, for the papacy of Pius XII. 
And as I'm sure you recall, you know, Jewish groups have been pushing for this for many decades, ever since Ralph Hachut's play in 1963, The Deputy, uh, brought up the issue of the silence of the Pope during the Holocaust, his failure to speak out against the mass murder of Europe's Jews. Um, so uh, I'm planning to be there the day you know, these archives open in at the Vatican, uh, March 2nd. Uh, this brings up, I think, one of the sticking points or one of the points of tension with the, between the Vatican and the Jewish community, which is this question of coming to terms with the past, that uh, because of all this discussion of the silence of the Pope during the Holocaust, uh, Pope John Paul II uh, commissioned a uh, high-level uh, Vatican group led by a cardinal to look into this history. Did the church bear any responsibility for the demonization of the Jews that led to the Holocaust, to the Shoah? And after 11 years of study, they came out with this famous document called We Remember, it's the late 1990s. And that document basically denied that church and Christian demonization of the Jews had anything to do with uh, making the Shoah possible. Uh, this is clearly, I think, untrue, and any serious history would show it. So uh, I'm hoping that the opening of the archives can be the occasion to revisit, for the Vatican to revisit those issues and uh, come to terms with them in a way that they've been still unwilling to do. Amazing. Uh, well, Professor Kurtzer, you have been such a pioneer and brought so much brilliant scholarship to us. And, and so we're so grateful for your time and we wish you so much continued success in all your work. Well, thanks very much.